Okay, we're back here live in Las Vegas for day three of our exclusive wall-to-wall -wall coverage. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and expect to see them from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org. And we have on theCUBE, Dr. Matt Wood, general manager of data science for AWS. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much, it's great to be here. So, um, Doctor, I got to ask you, um, can you summarize the announcements for us here? I mean, let's put, let's put the package together. Let's try to put the portfolio right. of innovation on the table. It's uh, pretty large, but let's I'll lay it best. out. Let's be All right, <laughs> let's play it out. So, um, yesterday, uh, Andy made a couple of announcements uh, in his keynote. Uh, he talked a little bit about um, how customers could improve their compliance and governance um, standpoint uh, using a new service we have called uh, Amazon CloudTrail, AWS CloudTrail. That basically allows customers to collect logs of changes to their infrastructure configuration. So when you create a security group, remove a security group, any of those sort of uh, changes get captured in an audit log, they get stored into Amazon S3, and then you can plug those into your, uh, your standard reporting around uh, other audit trails inside your organization. So that's CloudTrail. Uh, we also announced, uh, you might have heard of uh, Amazon Workspaces, uh, a new uh, virtual desktop done the Amazon way. Uh, we also launched uh, Amazon AppStream as well, a uh, method of running resource intensive applications up on AWS and delivering them back down to any type of device, be it a laptop or a mobile device, uh, without having to worry about whether the physical hardware could support the graphically intensive nature. So that was day one. Do you want to start there? Yeah, let's, just go, let's go day two and then right. we'll go unpack them all. Right, all right, day two. Um, so this morning, uh, Werner Vogels, uh, CTO of Amazon.com, uh, came on stage, he made uh, a, a couple of announcements. Uh, he announced that we were going to uh, bring uh, the PostgreSQL uh, database to uh, the Amazon Relational Database Service. Uh, got a big cheer. Uh, a lot of customers have been asking about that for, uh, for a long time, so it's great to be able to make that available. And uh, within about uh, two minutes of him making the announcement, it was actually available to launch up on the, uh, on the console and customers were using it. Um, we also announced uh, some new multi-region features. Uh, so customers have asked us to be able to um, move some of their data around more easily for um, uh, business continuity and disaster recovery scenarios. Uh, so we added Redshift snapshot copy, uh, and we also announced uh, the availability in the next couple of months of cross-region read replicas uh, for MySQL on RDS. Uh, this allows you to basically have a, a relational database that is keeping copies of the data available uh, asynchronously replicated across multiple regions. So it allows you to set up uh, hot and warm standbys of your application running across multiple regions. Again, a great boost for uh, reducing uh, recovery time and recovery point. Or even a pilot light, I heard this yeah, morning. Yeah, there's a pilot light set up as well, that's right. Um, so you've got to keep that pilot light warm. Um, so, so we did that. Uh, we also uh, announced some new instance types on EC2. Uh, so we announced the new i2 uh, instance. This is specifically di designed for very high performance uh, IO intensive applications. So no SQL applications and data warehousing applications. Uh, the uh, eight extra large instance type uh, can drive 350,000 IOPS uh, at, uh, for reads, uh, 4K random reads, and about 320,000 IOPS for random 4K random writes. So this is a very, very high performance beast uh, in terms of IO. And we announced the C3 instance as well. Uh, three C3 instance type is specifically designed for computationally intensive workloads. So it has the latest uh, Intel Xeon uh, E5 Ivy Bridge processor. It also has some smart networking technology which uh, allows you to uh, reduce the latency uh, which is uh, on the network, which is very important for tightly coupled high performance computing applications. Uh, and then of course uh, we wrapped out the show uh, with Amazon Kinesis, a new managed service uh, for uh, real time streaming data analytics. Okay. I think I did that almost in one breath. That, that was awesome. kick ass. All right, good. Okay, so let's break it down. So you got day one enterprise, day two under the hood, day three connecting all the dots at the top of the stack, pulling all together. Uh, all the goodness of Amazon, certainly everyone's been familiar with, but really what really is key is you guys are really moving the ball down the field yard by yard, first down, first and 10, move the chains, use the football analogy. But Kinesis is the big pass play. That allows right. data to stream in, which opens up, opens up a lot of new possibilities. So I want to get your take on Kinesis. Sure. Um, you know, we are, we're saying, we were saying earlier, the analysis is this closes the loop. Because now I can put any stuff into Redshift very quickly and start doing more iteration through data and then reroute that back into my development. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. I mean, that makes the integrated stack really, really hum. Now that's disruptive. 
So what's your take on that? How do you see that? What are customers doing and what case, use cases have you seen that in action? Sure, so um, we kind of look at data in terms of a, a timeline or a life cycle. Uh, so you think about it, that you know, customers are generating data all the time, whether it's on social networks or sensor networks, uh, and then they need a place to collect and store that information. Uh, once you've stored it, you need to be able to ask questions of it, so you need to be able to compute against it. And once you've computed and asked questions of that data, you typically need a way to be able to um, collaborate and share the results of that information. So if you rewind three to five years ago, uh, the cost of data generation was sufficiently high that it was the rate limiting step in that, in that life cycle. Um, today, um, the cost of data generation is plummeting. Uh, whether you're dealing with social networks with you know, hundreds of millions of customers, whether you're dealing with genomic sequencing, you're, you're dealing with um, building out sensor networks, putting that pressure sensor on the end of the drill uh, that's drilling for oil. Um, these all drastically reduce the uh, cost of de generating data which makes it uh, the economics more favorable that more, more data is going to be generated. And that puts tremendous pressure on the infrastructure rely, uh, required to collect, compute, and collaborate around the, the data that's stored. So what Amazon Kinesis does is it allows an entirely new class of application to be built and developed uh, without the complexity of, being, of having to manage either batch processing, uh, which typically can't keep up at scale, uh, or uh, very, very high throughput uh, data streams. And what it means is you can capture that. Uh, Kinesis will store the data uh, for 24 hours uh, in a very reliable fashion uh, in an entirely managed environment. So customers don't have to worry about provisioning the storage and the servers and all the rest of it. They just set the amount of throughput that their application needs and uh, they can just set it and then start streaming uh, data in straight away. So you're immediately persisting the data, right? Absolutely, so as soon as it comes in, it's reliably persisted across data centers, across availability zones under the hood, uh, and we store it there for 24 hours. And what that means is you can ask Kinesis to do uh, window analysis. So you can say, give me all the data for this particular sensor in the last five minutes. And I want to compare that with five minutes an hour ago. So you can move this window around and do uh, some time series analysis based on the data that's flowing through. And uh, where we expect to see these sort of uh, use cases uh, uh, really shine are uh, with uh, operational logs. Uh, so these are uh, customers that have large scale operations uh, that uh, have lots of instances, lots of operational metrics of their application level, uh, their database level, and they want to be able to collect all of that and immediately respond to any changes in their operational status. So whether that query is running slow or a particular application server is misbehaving, you want to be able to quickly identify that and respond to it in kind. Okay, 24 hours. Uh, yeah. What happens after 24 hours? Uh, 24 hours, it's a rolling process. Uh, if you want to persist that data, uh, you have to be able Glacier. to take it and put it, well, you, you can put it into S3, S3, or S3 or yeah. and then from S3 you can persist it into Glacier. So the option for the customer is to move, it's just, okay, move that window if they want to. Uh, pay, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the process of Kinesis, you can think of it as a big water hose. And on that big water hose, it, you can make it elastic, so you can yeah. increase the diameter to put more water through it. Um, but you can just attach sensors to the yeah. water. And the hose doesn't care how much water it's handling, and you can add as many of those sensors to the hose pipe as you like. So you can measure the pH and the temperature and the pressure. That's what Kinesis is. You can create these Kinesis applications which are continually sensing the stream of data that's thrown through the pipe. It's great for developers to look at what's going on in their applications and their environment, right? That's one of the main ahas right now. Mm -hmm. Phase one is, you know, <laughs> you know, hey, I can see stuff better, yeah. right? And you got Redshift to do some querying against it. Um, what have you guys done with the product? Share with just anecdotally, uh, prior to the announcement, uh, the goodness of it, what, you know, what's the vibe like, what's the sentiment? Are you guys falling out of your chair? I mean, what <laughs> are some of the things that's going on internally, just to give a taste for the folks out there? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so uh, we're extremely excited about Amazon Kinesis. Um, we think that it uh, enables uh, organizations of any size. So whether you're a young startup with a bold new idea that doesn't want to be constrained by their infrastructure, or you're a large uh, engineering organization that's starting to deploy large amounts of sensors like GE, uh, you want a hassle-free, reliable way of collecting and analyzing that data and responding to it in kind. So this has been extremely challenging from an infrastructure perspective, but also from a software and a managed service perspective. And so I think the real value for Kinesis is making those type of advanced next generation analytics available to, to everybody. 
So we're, I, I want to ask you, let's just change gears a little bit, talk about you personally. You know, Dave and I love big data. We've been at the first original Hadoop world, now all the Hadoop summits. We totally love the data science. We built our own uh, crowd spot, Apple platforms, got mm -hmm. 75 million, 76 million people, adding a million people a day into it. All real time, all on Amazon, so we're super excited. Uh, but I got to ask you, what is your role? I mean, you're GM <laughs> of data science. What does that mean, and what do you do every day? Sure, that's a good question. Um, so I've been at Amazon about five years. Uh, and at Amazon, you don't so much change roles as just a mass responsibility. So I've, I've ended up being at the intersection <laughs> of many things. You take on more responsibility. Yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I'm at the intersection of many things. Um, so I spend a lot of time with customers, uh, helping them get as much value as possible from the data that they have available, and in uh, helping them to kind of get the value from that data inside their organization so that they can get real actionable information from it. Uh, so spend a bunch of time on that. Uh, I also spend uh, a lot of time, so my team runs all launches for the platform. Uh, so all of the launches that we worked on today, uh, my team were involved in uh, kind of bringing those out and uh, helping customers understand them. So I do that, I've got a background in life sciences, so I also spend a lot of time with our life sciences customers, uh, whether that's uh, in the public sector, so working with the NIH, or customers like Illumina building out these very large genetic sequencing instruments that are, are just sensors, basically. So the, everyone always talks about data scientists, it's the rage, so, but <laughs> we, know, we were talking at, at our event, Big Data NYC, a couple weeks ago, that there's like about 200,000 data scientists in the world today, give or take a few, how you define it, but over two million data analysts. <laughs> so the world data, the data world is really going to, you're going to see all the action come from knowledge workers. So how are you making it easier? What's the vision? How do you see data, I'm sure there'll be more data science, there'll be growth on data science for sure, while you know, math, guys writing Python, but you're going to start to see general purpose tooling around data science uh, for, for analysts. What's mm -hmm. your vision on that? Yeah, so I think the, the most important role for a data scientist is that of interpretation. So being able to take the business requirements from one side of the organization and interpret it and know enough about the business that you can make informed interpretation around those requirements and then pass those on to the technical development and the analyst teams to be able to go off and implement those requirements. So it takes a strong understanding and a strong clear vision of where the organization is going and what the challenges are, but also a strong kind of deep technical focus in understanding the statistical models and where you might use machine learning and all those sort of things. And the flip side of that is being able to take the results of those experiments. So the statistical results, the statistical models, the piping those back into the rest of the organization and being able to make informed judgment calls about what is actually a valuable result from the data analytics that you're running. What's the biggest thing that surprised you here at this event um, huh. that you didn't expect to have happened? Overwhelming, someone grabbed you in the hallway and said hey, buy a beer, customer said it's great implementation, success of one of the launches. What, what surprised you this, uh, this week? I, I think it's just the scale of the event. I mean, it's, uh, it, this is only the second year we've run it. Uh, we've got nearly 9,000 people in attendance. And like, because we've been at AWS uh, a reasonably long time, five of those seven and a half years, uh, just seeing the growth of the organization and these sort of leaps and bounds that the organization is going through is, is fantastic. But more so, it's the, the strength of the customer stories and the strength of the diversity of the customers. I mean, we work daily with folks like Pinterest, and you can walk out of a meeting with Pinterest and walk into a meeting with NASA. Uh, and so that diversity can only be delivered with this kind of utility platform. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I find most exciting. We were just commenting, we're getting the hook here, but so I got to ask you to get the final word on, the, on, on this segment. The car's leaving Las Vegas from, from reInvent. What's the bumper sticker on the car? What, yeah. is it, what does it say? We've been asking everybody all week. What, is, what, is is it, what, what does it say? Yeah. What's the bumper sticker say? Uh, I think it would say, what would Kinesis do? And uh, it would just, uh, I would just want customers to start thinking about if you don't have to worry about the infrastructure, and you don't have to worry about the complexity, what new applications can you build with the data that you're collecting or you want to collect uh, and that Kinesis enables? Intelligence, creativity, new things, new use cases. This is our exclusive coverage. We'll be right back with our show wrap up right after this short break. <laughs>